If you're a non-gun person, if you grew up in an uh, urban environment, you never had firearms, your father, your grandfather, your uncle never took you to the range, it's not part of your heritage or your traditions, I absolutely understand why looking at these things and listening to what you're told would make you nervous. If I didn't know anything about them, they might make me nervous too. But I do know about them, so I can spot their lies just as though they're in neon lights. And you should be able to too. If you don't want to own a firearm, that's fantastic. But it's not right to stop those of us who do do things legally based on a lie. And, and, and these are all lies. Look that up. Semi-automatics in the late 1800s, the AR-15, the buzzword gun of today, the newest, latest, and greatest technology designed in 1959. And it's a small varmint caliber round. They try to make it out as though it's some huge powerful thing. It's not even legal to hunt deer in many states because people don't think it would give a humane kill. So it's far from a super powerful round. You're being lied to, and those lies are causing anxiety for you. Your reaction is to try to take things away from me that have been around since my grandfather was a child based on, again, the lie that it's some new, late and great type of technology, and it isn't. If you don't want to own a firearm, that's awesome. Don't own a firearm. But please, don't get behind a lie or, or even worse, numerous lies to try to concoct a reason why somebody who follows the law shouldn't be able to own exactly what they want to own based on an infantile fear or a whole string of lies. We're almost 20 years into this string of lies now about semi-automatic assault weapon. And again, those aren't even the same thing. That would be like saying a manual automatic transmission. It doesn't exist. They're, they're two entirely opposite things. Semi-automatic firearms are here to stay, just like internal combustion engines. We're not going back to steam engines, and we're not going back to manual firearms. And now that you know the truth, I hope that it makes you feel a little bit better. And if you're angry that you've been lied to all these years, that's good. You should be angry, because it would make me angry too. Another buzzword they like to use is uh, throw a model number out. In the 1970s, it was the MAC-10. Uh, and then that turned in the 1980s to the Uzi. Everything bad was an Uzi. And in the 90s, everything that happened bad was an AK-47. And, and now, the last 15 years or so, everything bad that happens is because of an AR-15. Uh, I'm sure that you've heard that one, regardless of whether you own a firearm or absolutely detest them. An AR-15 is a firearm just like this, and this one is being touted as some kind of newfangled uh, slip from Pandora's box, uh, and, and the civilization just can't continue like it is because this rifle is around. Now, while this rifle might look familiar to you, you may have seen it on the news or something that looks a little bit like it uh, that our troops use, this is, again, that, that 100 plus year old technology, a semi-automatic, a self-loading rifle. And all that means is when you squeeze the trigger, it loads another round on its own. You don't have to operate a bolt, you don't have to operate a lever, you don't have to operate a pump action. It is just a self-loading rifle. That is it. While, while you may have seen firearms that look like this on the news, and, and the gun grabbers are using that fact, this particular firearm has been in existence since the late 1950s. And from it's in exactly the same, exactly the same gun. You can take a gun that was built in 1959, and even the fire control group, the most important part of it, will drop right into this receiver of this firearm that was made last year. There are virtually no changes other than cosmetic. Looking at something bad that happens and proclaiming uh, it couldn't have happened without the, the use of a semi-automatic firearm is to, to a gun person, exactly the same thing as somebody telling you as an automobile person there could not have been a pile up on the autobahn if it weren't for these internal combustion engines if we were still using steam engines like at the time of the whatever writing it is that they're going to make up for that argument then then these type of accidents wouldn't be possible well <laughs> we haven't used steam engines for an awful long time and internal combustion engines are pretty darn common 
So that argument would sound ridiculous to you. That's what that argument sounds like to somebody that understands how firearms work. When, when these anti-gun people look and talk about semi-automatic firearms, a 100 plus year old design, and talk about them as though they were just discovered yesterday. It doesn't make any sense at all. The first semi-automatic rifle was introduced in 1885. The first semi-automatic pistol in 1892. The first semi-automatic shotgun in 1902. And they work today exactly, exactly the same way they worked in the late 18 and early 1900s. But if you don't know, if you're a non-gun person, and you start hearing statistics and quotes and, and looking at scary video, when someone intentionally wants to lie to you, it's pretty easy to do if you don't have a background or knowledge of what it is they're lying about. You could lie to me all you want about tennis or maybe crocheting. You could say things that were completely off the chart, don't make any sense whatsoever. I don't know anything about either of those two subjects, so it's going to sound reasonable to me. And, and that is the way they prey upon you. It's an election year. Election years are worse than any others. Uh, people are trying to drive their constituents to the polls. And firearms, I, I don't know why the left hasn't learned this over the last 30 years or so. It, it's a losing issue. Anti-gun people are lying to non-gun people to justify their, their foolish new regulations that they keep coming up with all the time. So I thought it was worth two or three minutes to spend a little bit of time with you if, if you're a non-gun person, this video is for you. If you're a pro-gun person, please share this with somebody that is a non-gun person. So we're at least speaking the same language. If you're an anti-gun person, well, feel good knowing that I'll probably make a few cents off you watching this video regardless of what you think of it.